Good morning students, this is Mr. Boscarini and for our unit on motion today we're going to talk about distance time graphs. The objectives of today's lesson will be to, for you to be able to represent motion using distance time graphs and recognize the type of motion in a distance time graph. Basically what you'll be able to do will be to uh, draw a distance time graph when needed or be able to read the kind of motion represented in a distance time graph. Now motion graphs and in particular distance time graphs um, are needed if we want to represent uh, the motion of an object, the movement of an object uh, with a different method uh, than uh, for instance, using a table of data. No, we we uh, study the movement of an object by looking at the distance traveled in a given amount of seconds and then recording again after uh, a few more seconds, so on. You can uh, try to understand the motion of an object just looking at this kind of raw data, but um, we can also represent the same motion in a more visual way, in a way which is more easy for us to understand at a glance. So, this is part of a series of lessons where we're going to explore not only distance time graphs, that will be today, but also speed time graphs. And for that, we will actually have a lesson in two parts. So, how does a distance time graph look like? First of all, we need to draw our axis as I done here. Now time in this kind of motion graphs will always be on the horizontal axis, the x-axis. And in this case, distance will be on the vertical axis, the y-axis. Now for the examples of today's lesson, I will not be using numbers. Therefore, I'm also not using specific units like meters or seconds or kilometers an hour. Of course, in the exercise that we're going to do in class, in the labs that we're going to do together, we're going to use numbers and units. And we will start with the simplest kind of distance time graph, the one that represents an object which is not moving. Now, if you have an object which is not moving, it means that its position in time will not change. Now, this position can be anywhere with respect to our starting line, to our reference. For instance, it could be here. And what we have here, every second, every minute, every hour, depends what is your scale, you will see that the distance does not change. So, um, a distance time graph for an object which is not moving as a speed of zero, as we say, it's a flat line parallel to the x-axis. Now, let's imagine, on the other hand, that we have an object that moves at a constant speed. First of all, we have to remember, what does constant speed mean? It means that every unit of time can be seconds, minutes, etc. This object is always traveling the same distance. For instance, in the case that is depicted here, every two squares of time, we have two squares of distance. And then in the next unit of time, and then on, so on and so forth. No? And if you connect these dots, you will see that you get a very specific pattern, what we call a straight line. And this can apply to any kind of movement with constant speed. So, at this point we know that in a distance time graph, a constant speed is represented by a straight line, like this one. So, what if we have two different objects, each traveling at its own speed, no? So, let's imagine they all start at the same place, at the same time, and this, the uh, object, uh, the object, uh, the, sorry, the motion of the first object is represented by this red line, and the motion of the second object is represented by the green line. So, we know that both of them have the same speed, but which one is bigger? And to answer this question, it, we have to think, what does it mean to be faster? It means that if you start at the same time, and you start at the same place, after some time, you will be ahead of the other one. So, let's look what happens, for instance, here. At this time, 
this is the position of the object number one, not the one represented by the red light. And this is the position of the second object. Now, it's obvious that this object is ahead. So we can say that v2, the speed of a second object, is bigger than the speed of a first object. And what is the difference between these two lines? It's the slope. You'll see that the slope is really, really important here. So we have seen that straight lines going upwards, they represent a constant speed. What if we have, on the other hand, a straight line that goes downwards, like this one? Well, we can interpret it very easily by thinking that, look, the distance is decreasing over time. What we say here is that the speed is constant, but it's a negative constant speed. Or we can say that v is less than zero. Okay, so it's a negative number. Finally, how does the distance time graph for a movement that doesn't have a constant speed look like? So, remember, if the speed is not constant, we're saying that we have an acceleration. And again, acceleration can be positive, it can be negative. But in all cases, you know, we know that it means that we have a line that doesn't have a constant slope. It's not a straight line. So, any curved line, like this one, represents an acceleration. Now, as I told you, the slope of a line in a distance time graph is very, very important. But let's go back to what you learned in algebra last year. Now, you know that the slope of a line is given by rise over run, which means how much up you're going and how, divided by how much you go across. We can also say that the slope of a line is y divided by x. But in our case, in the distance time graph, what are these rise and run? They are the distance and the time. Now, distance divided by time is a formula that we have met before. And it's a formula for average speed. Now, since we're talking about an object with a constant speed, we can just call it speed. And this is a very important finding here that the slope is equal to the speed. So we can summarize this finding with a statement. In a distance time graph, the slope, also known as the gradient of a line, is numerically equal to the speed. And in later years in high school, you will see this is true for any kind of curve. If you look at a specific point in a distance time graph, in the curve of a distance time graph, the slope in that point will be the speed of the object at that time. Finally, let's look at an example, a numerical example of a distance time graph. So we have this graph here, and you can immediately see we have three different moments in this graph. The movement from A to B, and then we have the movement from B to C, and finally we have the movement from C to D, this icon, that's point D. In this case, finally we have the units, so we can try to work out what's happening in this first part of the journey, in the second part of the journey, and in the third part of the journey. So let's start with a part from A to B. And when we study these kind of graphs, we have to look at each quantity which is involved, starting with the time. So from A to B, the trip takes 3 seconds. The distance traveled from A to B. That is, 6 meters. If this is a straight line. That means this is a constant speed. We do distance by, by time, and we see that the speed from A to B is 2 meters to the second minus 1. From B to C is even easier, because we have a flat line. And if you remember, a flat line means the speed is 0. And this is pretty obvious, because the distance is not changing. So what I'm going to write here, look, but I'm not writing the time from the start. I'm writing the time of the journey from B to C, and that is 4 seconds. What is, the dis what is the distance traveled from B to C? It's 0 meters, and the speed is obviously 0 meters per second. And here we are at the last part of the journey, from C to D. Again, we can look at how much is the time from C to D, and that is 
you can do just 13 minus 7 or you can just count the squares but anyway you get that it's 6 seconds the distance traveled is 3 meters again you can do 9 minus 6 or you can just count the squares here and it was already obvious that this journey was slower from here to here and look at the slope the slope from A to B is bigger than the slope from C to D but you can also do the math and if you do 3 divided by 6 you'll get a speed of 0.5 meters per second so we have analyzed the, um, the journey from A to B, from B to C and from C to D and what is interesting at this point, an extension of this exercise is to see what is the average speed over the whole trip and this is enough to see how actual speed which is what we wrote here is different from the average speed and how would you find the average speed? This is a question I'll leave to you can you figure out what is the average speed over the whole journey? So next lesson we're going to see speed time graphs. For now, that's all from Mr. Boscarini. Bye-bye.